Officials are investigating after a 33-year-old man fell to his death this week while touring the Grand Canyon, walking across the viewing platform. The Grand Canyon is a popular tourist destination due to its stunning natural beauty and fascinating geological formations, but it also has its fair share of strange quirks. Since Benjamin Harris declared the Grand Canyon a national park in 1919, it has served as a popular tourist destination and recognizable icon. Scientists are equally as enamored with researching it as tourists are with marveling at it. The Grand Canyon is often regarded as one of the world's greatest natural attractions. The canyon is not just one of the most well-known tourist attractions in the United States, but it has also yielded a number of unusual and puzzling discoveries. The Grand Canyon has been the site of numerous mysterious and unexplained occurrences, from ancient artifacts and bizarre rock formations to exotic animal species. Amazingly, the Grand Canyon gave rise to the theory that even more amazing and unbelievable species once roamed the planet's surface. Envision, akin to the dinosaurs, a long-forgotten individual materializing before your very eyes. Researchers keep searching the world for hidden secrets, believing there are still many more that the planet Earth hides. Come along as we explore the Grand Canyon's most bizarre and disturbing discoveries. People from many walks of life have been mesmerized by the Grand Canyon for many years. The sheer size and beauty of it have left countless people in wonder and admiration. The Grand Canyon, like many other famous landmarks, has, however, become fertile ground for scary and mysterious myths and tales. Although these stories are works of fiction and folklore, they enhance the beauty of the area by adding an air of mystery. The ghost of a woman who wanders aimlessly through the Grand Canyon is one of the more chilling urban legends about the area. The locals claim that tourists have seen a ghostly woman in white who wanders the canyon's edge aimlessly. Others have said that she seems lost, as though she's looking for someone or something. There have been rumblings that she is the specter of a hiker who perished in the canyon's perilous depths and now haunts the area. The tragic fatalities that have occurred within the Grand Canyon's immense stretches are another chilling facet of the canyon's history. Accidents, collapses, and disappearances have occurred throughout the years to warn tourists of the risks they face in this spectacular but unpredictable setting. In the following pieces, we not only look at horrific crimes, but also unfathomable catastrophes, tragedies, and mysteries that can skew one's perception of an otherwise peaceful and serene setting. In 1879, while traveling through Arizona, merchant Don McGuire met Emma Lee on the Colorado River crossing. Lee gave McGuire a lovely Navajo blanket in return for some of his necessities, but she forewarned him about the cloak's sinister history. The woman claims that her husband's sudden death was caused by the cursed blanket. Clearly not a believer in superstition, McGuire left the canyon the day after. McGuire spent the following two years detailing how he had endured a hundred calamities, all of which had stopped after he lost the blanket. Such legends of evil Native American artifacts abound near the Grand Canyon. Tourists frequently write to park rangers pleading for the return of artifacts they've taken from religious sites. For example, visitors to national parks sometimes remove pottery from Native American graves before hurriedly reintroducing it to the area. According to park guards, the thief consistently gives the same excuse, claiming that they have experienced extreme bad luck, plagues, and other illnesses since picking up the stolen artifacts. There are several potentially deadly species that roam the Grand Canyon's enormous landscapes. Some of the many mammalian species found here include the potentially dangerous mountain lion, black bear, and elk. Surprisingly, one of the more dangerous animals in the park is the rock squirrel, Spermophilus variegates, which is noted for its severe bite and indiscriminate attacks. In 1933, a group of people had a rather strange experience with some of the canyon's native fauna. On the Snake Gulch Trail, a California prospector named Cochrane, then 43 years old, reportedly saw a rattlesnake. It was reported that Cochrane, who was terrified of snakes, went into cardiac arrest and died as soon as he saw one. Surprisingly, a rattlesnake bite has never been blamed for a fatality at the Grand Canyon. Over the course of the previous century, reports of skeletal remains being unearthed in various parts of the Grand Canyon have become widespread. These shocking discoveries are, nevertheless, to be expected given the large number of unsolved crimes recorded by the Coconino County Sheriff's Office. The county established a cold case squad 
to investigate and resolve cases involving missing persons, unattended deaths, killings, and the identification of remains. The unit is looking into a homicide that happened on the north rim of the canyon back in 1975 as one of its active cases. There was just a bloody shirt with 36 stab holes found at the scene, which the sheriff's office suspected, for reasons they did not disclose, belonged to a woman who had been slain by members of the outlaws, a motorbike gang. It is unclear how many people have died in the Grand Canyon. The causes of death range from accidents and suicides to sudden assassinations and protracted torture. In a misguided effort to give the victims a sense of individuality, some of them have been given names like Little Miss X and Valentine Sally. The cold case unit is still working on cases from nearly a century ago in the hopes of solving them and providing some peace of mind, if not to the families, then at least to the ghosts who haunt the canyon. Some people have tried to commit suicide in the most absurd manner possible by jumping into the Grand Canyon. For example, 36-year-old Patricia Astolfo tried to drive her car off the edge of a canyon after seeing the movie Thelma and Louise more than 50 times. However, her efforts were thwarted when the car's suspension became entangled in a rocky protrusion. Patricia was undeterred and jumped off the edge of the cliff, landing 20 feet below on a boulder. She made her way, bloodied and bruised, to the edge, where she rolled off and fell to her death. It's shockingly frequent for people to drive their cars off the edge of a canyon. In 2009, 57-year-old Gorge Chiriak checked out of the El Tovar Hotel and promptly drove his automobile off the south rim. In 2004, a man in his 20s committed maybe the world's most odd suicide when he jumped out of a helicopter while on a sightseeing trip. The other passengers, who were left in total and utter disbelief, said the man was silent and acting normally only moments before he jumped into the canyon. The El Tovar Hotel, which was built in 1905 and is only 20 feet from the South Rim, was considered the height of luxury at the time. Since then, several terrified visitors have claimed seeing ghosts and vowed they would never set foot on the cursed property again. One of the hotel's defining mysteries involves a flat, unassuming headstone bearing the inscription Pearl A. Ward, 1879 to 1934. Over the course of the previous century, numerous visitors and personnel have reported seeing a black-capped figure making its way from the graveyard to the nearby woods. On the third level, there is a well-dressed old guy whose presence is both unnerving and well-known. Reports from guests throughout the years indicate that he has personally extended invitations to the hotel's annual holiday party. Mysterious happenings, such as apparitions strolling the canyon's stony walkways or phantom workers toiling into the night, continue to draw curious sightseers who expect to catch a glimpse of the supernatural. Glenn and Bessie Hyde, newlyweds in the adventuring 1920s, decided to brave the Grand Canyon's raging rapids that winter. The couple's handcrafted wooden boat was discovered standing erect and well-stocked in the frigid canyon water after they had been gone for a month. Several days before their apparent disappearance, the Hydes were restocking their supplies on the south rim of the Grand Canyon when Bessie, then 22 years old, said the haunting words, I wonder if I'll ever wear pretty shoes again. Newspapers across the country began writing stories about the honeymooning couple, who were destined to set world records but seemed to have vanished. Even after one of the largest searches in Grand Canyon history, no one could find any evidence of what had happened. The Hyde's fate has been the subject of much conjecture, with possible outcomes ranging from murder at the hands of Native Americans to death by drowning. Robert Spangler murdered his family of four, wife Nancy and their two children, in their 1978 Denver suburb house. Then he set up the murder-suicide as though Nancy had committed the act. Despite the fact that the widower had positive gun residue tests on his hands, cops were unable to make a case against him. The unhappy family man would have to wait 15 years before acting out again. Robert, on vacation with his third wife Donna at the Grand Canyon in 1993, tossed her over a precipice and she fell 200 feet to her death. Robert was exonerated of murder once again because the police were unable to disprove that Donna had slipped because she had lost her balance. Luckily, he was diagnosed with terminal cancer in 2000, which brought investigator Paul Goodman to his doorstep in the hopes that he might be ready to confess. Goodman's instincts were astoundingly correct. Robert confessed to all four murders because he wanted FBI profilers to explain to him why he was so good at killing. Mr. Husband of the Year was sentenced to life in prison in March 2001. He died five months later. 
to explore the Grand Canyon, John Wesley Powell led the first group of white men downstream on the Colorado River in 1869. Powell and his crew reached the bottom of the canyon and were met with enormous, violent rapids. Three of the men left the one-armed Civil War veteran behind, certain that Powell's plan to continue further was suicidal and took their chances by climbing the canyon's cliffs. Powell and the rest of the party continued on into the wild rapids despite the risks. The group miraculously made it to the mouth of the Virgin River two days later where they were met by settlers. However, the three men who had left the expedition because they were afraid for their lives met a cruel and untimely end. The three were killed by Shivet local Americans as they made their way out of the canyon and closer to civilization, ostensibly in vengeance for the death of a local woman. Suicides, animal assaults, falls from the rim, lightning strikes, and the brutal murders of unsuspecting tourists rank among the Grand Canyon's most disturbing incidents. The bodies of Michael and Charlotte Sherman, who had been executed by shooting, were found in January 1977. The body of Japanese tourist Tomomi Hanamure, 34, was found by swimmers in 2006 at the base of a waterfall. Similar to the murder of Kim Kwanimtawa, 30, who was stabbed to death along the south rim of the canyon a number of years previously, she had been stabbed 29 times. The Grand Canyon is no stranger to gruesome murders, many of which have never been solved, which is not unusual for national parks in general. Word-of-mouth accounts of these catastrophes have spread rumors of ghosts and evil forces lurking in the canyon. The essential appeal of the Grand Canyon is found in its breathtaking scenery, the ageless geological marvels that have been formed over millions of years, and the opportunity it provides for tourists to form a profound connection with nature. The discovery of fossilized marine life hundreds of feet above the canyon floor is one of the most astounding scientific discoveries ever made in the Grand Canyon. Researchers discovered fossilized shells, coral reefs, and other marine life in rock layers thousands of miles inland from the nearest shore. This discovery helped prove that the entire area had been covered by water millions of years ago. This finding cast new light on the dynamic character of Earth's landscapes across eons of time and cast doubt on previously held beliefs about the region's geological past. This demonstrates that sea levels used to be substantially greater than they are now, extremely elevated. On the other hand, the bones of long-extinct organisms, including trilobites, were discovered by paleontologists searching for clues about Earth's early occupants in the Grand Canyon. The sedimentary layers of the Grand Canyon include a wealth of fossils left behind by trilobites and intriguing arthropods that roamed the oceans hundreds of millions of years ago. These discoveries were crucial in clarifying the history of life on Earth and shedding light on how marine habitats have changed throughout time. Trilobite fossils discovered in the Grand Canyon attest to the immense age of our planet and the potential for discovery that lies under its surface. Geologists and paleontologists examine the rocks to determine the canyons and walls' ages. And if there are any fossils to be found in the canyon, they unearth them as well. But there was a surprising discovery made just recently that has sent shockwaves across the scientific community. A cliff on the Bright Angel Trail in the Grand Canyon gave way and set off the chain of events. A large boulder was subsequently thrown onto the path below. Many researchers and sightseers ignored the boulder, but one man didn't. Norwegian professor of geology Alan Krill. At the University of Nevada in 2016, he made a trip. While hiking the Bright Angel Trail with his class, he found the incredible find. On the walk, Krill and his class came upon some fossilized footprints in a boulder. Immediately upon discovering the fossils, Krill photographed them and shared them with his UNLV colleague and paleontologist, Stephen Rowland. Scientists were able to correctly establish the boulder's age after researching its position and other factors. The neighboring cliff exposure of the Manacacha Formation along the Bright Angel Trail was the source of the boulder's fall. The fossilized footprints were dated to 313 million years ago, with a margin of error of 0.5 million years ago. 313 million years ago puts the tracks as having been made in the Carboniferous period. It was a time when Arizona was nearer the equator than it is today. There was no fossil match for the tracks on the boulder, suggesting the possibility of the discovery of a new species. Ichneotherium is the name given to the marking type that is thought to represent the footprints. So, what does this imply? These footprints represent the earliest evidence of an egg-laying, four-legged creature. 
Without a doubt, these are the earliest footprints ever discovered in the Grand Canyon. This finding may shed light on the evolutionary relationships between living and extinct species, or it may help to explain another mystery from the distant past. It has been observed that the animal's gait is similar to that of modern cats and dogs. This gait was formerly thought to have emerged far later in the evolutionary timeline of tetrapods. This also represents the earliest documented instance of animals traversing dune fields. The tracks in the rock have been attributed not only to one animal, but to two that were traversing the incline of a sand dune. However, there is some disagreement among scientists. Some people think that the animal was the same one that was seen traversing the dune twice. However, the two walking tempos represented by the recordings are distinct. Perhaps we can learn more about diadectomorphs from these fossils as well. It was previously thought that diadectomorphs couldn't thrive in desert environments like those found in Arizona. Scientists may have to reevaluate their assumptions about the possible adaptations these creatures have in light of this revelation. Fossils are frequently unearthed in the Grand Canyon. The canyon's formation ensures that many fossils are generated and then preserved within its walls. The age and other insights into the past that this fossil provides are what really set it apart, though. Scientists were able to gain a better understanding of the Grand Canyon's development, in addition to learning more about life 313 million years ago. Previous theories regarding the canyon's formation have been disproved by the existence of sand dunes and other creatures in the area. This discovery expands our understanding of the Grand Canyon's history beyond just the prehistoric era. Sand and water probably helped preserve these footprints. The imprint has aged with the rock and is now fully integrated into its 3D structure. Discoveries like these, made deep inside the Grand Canyon, highlight the value of research and the insatiable curiosity that propels human progress. They serve as a timely reminder that much of Earth's history and the complex processes that have molded it over eons of time remain unknown and unexplained. There will undoubtedly be more astonishing discoveries in store as scientists dive deeper into the Grand Canyon's mysteries. Insights regarding Earth's evolution and the myriad life forms that formerly flourished within its walls may be found in the canyon's distinctive geological makeup, which spans a huge chronology of Earth's history. The Grand Canyon is not just a reminder of the immense forces at work in the natural world, but also an active research facility where scientists may test their theories and explore uncharted territory. It's a reminder that there are still untold mysteries to be discovered beneath the surface of this incredible natural phenomenon and that the quest for knowledge has no limits. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.